Shalom. Today we're going to talk about what's in a name. This is the season where we're reading about Joseph, Yosef, and so we are going to learn about what is in his name. There is no wasted information in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 14.10, it is written, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Everything that is said is important, and everything, especially that is in the Word of God, is important, and it has a significance. So we often see that the names of the characters reflect their personalities. Here is an example from 1 Samuel 25, 25. Abigail comes to David talking about her husband. Let not my Lord David, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, Belial, with worthless, even Nabal. So his name is Nabal, Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and Nivala folly, is with him. But I, thine handmaiden, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. So she says clearly, his name is fool, and folly is what he does. Here is how Joseph came by his name. You remember that there was rivalry between Leah and Rachel. Rachel was unable to conceive, and finally she has a child in Genesis 30, 24. And she called his name Joseph and said, Yahweh shall add to me another son. If we look in the Hebrew, Vatikra et Shemo, and she called his name Yosef Lemor, saying, Yosef Yehovah Li ben Achar, he will add to me, he will give to me another son. The first place that we see this verb root is in Genesis 4, 2, and Eve is having children, and it says she again bare his brother Abel. The concept is more is that she continued having children after she had Cain, then she continued and she had another child. We see the first word there, Vatosef, and she continued. So the root for Yosef's name, Yud Samech Pe, is Strong's number 3254. And we see it translated in these manners in Job 27.1. Moreover, Job continued his parable. And in Psalm 115, verse 14, Yahweh shall increase you more and more, you and your children. In the past, we have talked a great deal about cognate roots. Cognate roots are related roots. They are related by the linguistic rules of sound shift. So the cognate root of Yasaf, Yud Samech Pei, is Asaf, Ayin Samech Pei. This is where Jong's number 622, we see how it is translated. Genesis 621, And take thou unto thee of all the food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. In Nehemiah 9, verse 1, Now in the twenty and fourth day of this month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloth and earth upon them. So we have these two ideas coming out of a saw to gather and to assemble. One of the most poignant scenes in certainly Bereshit is when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers in Genesis 45 verses 3 and 4. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph, Ani Yosef doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said to his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, Ani Yosef, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. So for us, when we present ourselves with our name, I am Bob, or I am Joe, or Fred, it's just, it's just some label that goes with us who we are, our name. But in Hebrew, it has a very clear meaning, as we've just seen. What does Yosef mean? And so when he says this, Ani Yosef, I am Yosef, and he says it twice, we can hear these two things going on. First of all, he says, I am, I am Yosef, I am the one who will continue you. I am the one who will add to you, which is his role in this place. 
He's the only one that can help them to continue to live in the midst of this famine. He's going to continue them. And also we can hear, I will gather you. I am assembling you. Not that he called for them to be gathered and assembled. The Lord did that. The Lord has gathered and assembled them around Yosef because the Lord had a plan for the future. Sometimes we can clearly see a parent root, the letters that the root has in common, which is Samech Peh. And we're going to look at some of these meanings. First of all, in Exodus 15.4, Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast down into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. So actually, the word here, based on this parent root, is suf, and it really means Reed Sea. Now how the Reed Sea became the Red Sea, I'm not really sure. I used to think that it had to do with spelling anomalies in English going back to the 1300s. But actually, in the Septuagint, which was written about 285 BCE, before Yeshua came, in the Greek, it does say Red Sea. So perhaps the Red Sea does look red because it has some uh, algae bloom or something like that. The word suf, the etymology of how the word suf became reed, is obscure and nobody will comment on where it came from. But I can tell you, when they got to the Red Sea, they were at the end of any place that they could go. So perhaps it is aptly named. In Zephaniah 1-2, the verb becomes, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith Yahweh. So this idea of sof, suf, has the idea of being something is at the end. In Ecclesiastes 12-13, a verse you undoubtedly know, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Sof hadavar, the end of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. In 1 Kings 14.17, Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. And when she had come to the threshold of the door, the child died. So the idea of the threshold, the sof, it's where something ends. And then after the door, something new begins, the house begins. So it's also this idea of an ending of something. In an interesting coincidence, if you believe in such things, we'll find that the parent root, where the letters are, the, are reversed, Pesamech, has some similar ideas of being at the end of something, and you can look at this video on this channel to study more about that. So this story of Joseph is uh, in this Parsha, Miketz. He's finally going to get out of jail. Ketz is another word that also has a meaning of being at the end, we see in Genesis 41, 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. If we are at the end of two years, that means we're coming into the third year, which is equivalent to coming into the third day. Whenever we look at anything that happens on the third day, we should go back to the concept of creation of what was what happened on the third day of creation on the third day of creation the grass appeared it doesn't say that God created the grass although undoubtedly he did because he created everything it doesn't say that anybody planted grass and then it sprouted up it just says on the third day the grass appeared so we should always be looking for something that has to do with something that's latent and it's waiting to happen okay so we can think of Joseph he's been in jail just waiting and then finally in the third day he is going to be revealed and set the final events in motion where the family will come down to Egypt and be assembled and be continued finally when we look at Joseph we should all remember, always remember that he is a shadow picture of Yeshua, the Messiah. Luke 19.10 For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Matthew 24.31 And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. John 11.52 
uh, according to Caiaphas's pronouncement, that it would be good for one man to die on behalf of the people. And not only that, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Until the day of our gathering, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. And that is the end of this.